Hey everybody, welcome to How Do We Fancy. Today I'm gonna to be doing a beauty tag. It's the beauty scenarios tag. And I was tagged in this by Miss Leanne Says. And if you're not familiar with her, I'm not sure how you're not because I feel like probably 90% of you have come to my channel because of her, so thanks for that. But on the off chance that you don't know who she is, I will leave her link down below because you definitely gotta know her. Um, she is lovely, she's hilarious, and she's one of the very few people on YouTube that I watch every single video because I love her that much. So I'm gonna get right into the questions. I've looked them over, they're a little bit random, but I think it'll be fun. Question number one is you have to get rid of all of your foundations and you can only keep one high-end and one drugstore. Which do you keep? Um, drugstore for me is really, really easy. It's the CoverGirl 3-in-1 foundation. By far the best drugstore foundation as far as color match for me. And Staying Power, it's what I have on today. And I absolutely love it. If you want to see a tutorial, I actually just filmed this look using that foundation. And so I'm not sure if this will be up first or if that will be up first. But whichever way, when that's up, I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, definitely, that's my drugstore. As far as high end, oh, it's kind of depends on the season, I think. I'm going to have to go with NARS Sheer Glow. I've kind of been having a more recent love affair with it again um, because I'm still trying to use up the bottle that I've had for a couple of years because the lid's broken. I think we've talked about this before, but I feel like as far as a good all-round, like year-round foundation, I can always go to that one and it's going to work with my skin no matter what's happening, whether it's dry, um, I just have to use a little bit of extra moisturizer, but if it's summer, I can just use like a regular SPF and put that on top and it always looks great and flawless. Color on that is a little bit iffy, so that's why in the back of my mind is the Jouer Moisture Matte tint because I feel like it's a little bit better of a color match for me. But overall, I'm gonna have to say NARS Sheer Glow for my high-end foundation. Question <laughs> number two. You go for an interview and the lady interviewing you has lipstick on her teeth. Do you approach the subject or ignore it completely? Um, I am definitely someone who wishes that I were the person who could like sweetly approach the boss lady with lipstick on her teeth and be like, honey, ha ha ha, this is happening. It's, a, it's fine, we all do it, no big deal. But I feel like in real world situations, I'd probably just be so like uptight and avoiding confrontation that I would just ignore it completely. Especially in an interview, if I've never met the person for the first, you know, if this is the, like our first time meeting, definitely avoiding that confrontation because that like is personal. Like lipstick on your teeth is a very personal thing in my opinion. So you kind of have to have that relationship with someone before you approach that. I know that seems weird, but it is what it is. Question number three. You're not feeling yourself and need a pick-me-up. Which lipstick do you put on to make yourself feel beautiful? Um, this person who made this quiz, they definitely know me because lipstick is the thing that I go to if I need to like lift myself. I think it would probably be mascara, but because I wear glasses, you don't that doesn't make a huge difference, but lipstick definitely makes a difference. Um, as far as a pick-me-up, I don't know that like makeup in general can like lift your spirits, but it can make you feel a little bit more confident. So, oh, which one would I go to? I think it would have to be right now. I think it would be Lime Crime, the pink velvet, velveteen. I think that's one of the easiest pinks for me to wear. Once you get it on, it just stays put. It looks great with my skin tone. And yeah, that would probably be my go-to for a pick-me-up. Question four. You go back in time for a day to your teenage years. Ugh. How would you do your hair and makeup differently? This is a crazy question because I'm trying to think about all of the hairstyles I had in high school. I think it was mainly just blonde kind of highlights. I'm a Texas girl. Bouffant, shoulder length, straight, because I'm a straight-headed person. Um, but I think I would definitely... And I wasn't afraid of like doing anything crazy or anything like that for sure. I think I would definitely have grown my hair out a little bit longer than I did in high school. I never, this is the longest my hair has ever been in my entire life. So I think I would have told myself just stop cutting your hair and let it grow. But I for some reason had this fear of letting my straight hair grow 
and maybe because I got hot every summer I just wanted to chop it off I'm not sure what it was but I think that would be the hair thing is just let your hair grow and um, you look a lot better and I think I had this obsession with looking much older than I was so I was always trying to like perfect my skin and instead of you know creating like a nice what I would consider now a blank canvas I just put a lot of foundation and concealer on my face and didn't know how to like highlight contour I didn't know how to use bronzer um, I liked sparkly eyeshadow but I didn't know how to use like eyeliner and mascara so I think and especially because I have light colored eyes I think I could have used some eye makeup help during those years and I also wore contacts during those years as well for the most part so I think some eye makeup help and just general like toning it down not that I wore a ton you couldn't tell that I was t that's the thing the weird thing is when I look back at pictures I know how much makeup I put on but when you look back you still see like all sorts of redness and patchiness and I just really wish I could give my 16 year old self like a makeup tutorial it's embarrassing but that's the thing I wish I would also tell myself not to pick at my skin because I definitely would get really anxious and I had bad skin and I would just pick at it and pick at it and pick at it and I wish I would just tell myself to lay off of messing with my skin because that I think caused just a lot of problems with self-confidence and yada yada and there you go life story in a nutshell question number five you ask your hairdresser for a shoulder length pixie lot haircut but they hear wrong and give you a pixie cut do you a smile and say thank you leave and call your mum hysterical mum um, do you B, cry in the chair and things get awkward? Or C, do you complain to the manager and demand a refund? Um, <laughs> I think it depends on what mood I'm in. But here's the thing. A, I should kick myself for not paying attention to what the heck they were doing with my hair. Because I'm pretty curious when it comes to getting my hair done, just because I think it's interesting to watch people do hair. And um, so I definitely feel like if, you know, I'm losing length, I should be aware of that. So A, kick myself. B, I know how I look in a pixie cut, so it would be dramatically like, horrible if I got a pixie cut even though I secretly in my mind want to be like all oh, Winona Ryder in the 90s and look cute with a pixie cut it just I have big ears I have a weird shaped face for a pixie cut it doesn't work on me trust me my early 2000s self can attest to that and so yeah I B I would probably be mortified but C I would definitely not say anything I may like regret it but again with a confrontation thing I'm not very confrontational I would probably just deal with it and make the best of it and maybe figure out how to rock a faux hawk maybe we'd rock a faux hawk with that one I don't know question number six is your friend surprises you with a four-day city break and you have one hour to pack which do-it-all palette do you pack in your makeup bag I think right now it would have to be, oh, I'm going to have to go with the Balm, the Nude Tube palette that I just got from the Balm because I feel like it has a good mix of lights and darks and mattes and shimmery things. But the thing about that that separates it from most of my neutral palettes is it has both a matte black and a matte brown eyeshadow. So that would be my go-to palette, I think. Question number seven. Your house has been robbed. Don't worry, everyone's safe. <laughs> but your beauty stash has been raided. Who is Pat McGrath like raiding my home now? That would be amazing, by the way. Um, what's the product you really hope is safe? I have no idea. I'm gonna go ahead and say probably my makeup brushes because I feel like I can replace most of the makeup that I have with things that I would equally love, but to repurchase brushes would I think break my heart. So maybe that, or maybe some of my like limited edition, like special packaging stuff. I think some other people have said that, but I'm gonna have to say like my Wayne Goss brushes, if I lost them in a raid, um, I would hope to God that Charlotte Tilbury had broken into my home and stole them because they just, they would need to go to a good home. Last question, question number eight, is your friend borrows your makeup and returns it in awful condition. Do you A, just pretend you haven't noticed, 
B, ask them to repurchase it, or C, secretly do the same to something of theirs. Okay, never repay evil with evil, it always goes bad. So C is out of the question. Um, a, pretend you haven't noticed. It depends on the friend, if it's just like a, but if I'm letting you borrow my makeup, I feel like we're probably good friends because I don't just like loan out my makeup here and there. But um, yeah, so if I loaned it out to a friend, it would be someone who I trusted and who I had a relationship with. So I feel like I could totally be like, dude, what the heck? Why did you do my makeup? In a joking way, loving way, of course, because no makeup product is worth risking your friendship over. That's ridiculous. But I feel like we should be like strong enough friends that I could be like, hey, dude, uh, what'd you do? Do you have a little mishap? I know you're clumsy, but uh, maybe we should have a lesson. I don't know. So I probably just maybe like jokingly mention it to them, but I wouldn't expect them to like repurchase it or anything. Um, if they offered, that would be awesome. But yeah, I definitely wouldn't expect anything in return. I mean, if you loan something out, there's a risk involved. There's a risk you're taking. You have to be prepared for a potential disappointment, but you know, it's not that big a deal. It's just makeup. So those are all the questions in the tag for today. I hope that you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you wanna do the tag, feel free, consider yourself tagged. I know a lot of people say that, but I really mean it when I say that. Consider yourself tagged. Um, I will link a few people down below or mention a few people down below that um, may want to do this if they haven't already. I'll leave them down in the description bar. So make sure that you let them know that they've been tagged. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. Just lets you know when I have new videos available so that you don't miss out on any of the fun. Also, if you need more How To Be Fancy, I am on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram is probably my favorite place. I'll leave all the links for everything down below. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. That I cannot believe I did not have in my life um, until very recently as in like last month and it is this Denman styling brush holy goodness if you